maybe a, so that started my interest in aviation, and it's continued ever since. So my training at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, was very interesting. We, uh, we were close to the Wichita Wildlife Area, and that afforded uh, many short strips. So we learned how to land and take off in 600 feet or less, and on the knobs of hills and, and uh, in the mountains where we were there. So anyway, graduating that and getting sent to Vietnam, uh, Vietnam, getting sent to uh, Korea, I found that uh, Flying there was a lot of fun. The airplanes uh, worked great. We were able to uh, work up uh, the ability to run three fire commands at one time. And uh, we started in, if there was anything in our area when they were up, we, we, would, we would fire on it. And if there wasn't anything, we then had a, we would destroy any facilities that the enemy was using at that time. Uh, one highlight of the whole thing was a naval uh, bombardment officer came up and I got to fly him out over the front and he happened to be from the battleship Iowa. So I got the, uh, got the great honor of uh, adjusting the fire from the battleship Iowa, which uh, when they fired their 16 inches you could, uh, you could see them leave the ship but you never lost them out in the area because the, the size of the explosion was, was there. One thing I observed and I got there that uh, the Army had helicopters and I noticed the helicopter pilots didn't have to fly uh, over the lines as we did with our L-19s to adjust the artillery. Flying behind the lines was our choice simply because uh, you had something called Hellfire, which was uh, the artillery rounds would uh, set off before they landed to give a better spread. Hellfire was uh, usually fired by Corps or 8th Army. Consequently, sometimes we didn't get the word so we couldn't clear the area and you would see the gun target line with all the rounds coming, so that's when you knew that you had to get out of the way. Uh, so that let us do it uh, from the enemy side and uh, do the observation. We could see where the rounds hit much better and see the targets much better. Helicopter pilots didn't fly much and didn't have to fly beyond the line, although they got the same credit for being in combat as we did. So uh, decided that uh, I was going back and get to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, so I could get checked out in every airplane that the Army had, so I had no more limitations. So that was my next step. I got assigned to Fort Sill. I started out as an L-19 instructor, and from there I went on to uh, fly the Beaver, uh, the twin-engine L-23, and I was also on the Army demonstration team. And then everywhere I went, I made sure that I got qualified in every aircraft that was out there in the field. I had fun of being with the uh, Army demonstration team for three years, went from Fort Sill to Camp Rucker. And the last one we show we put on was the National Aircraft Show in Philadelphia. Then they decided that since I was a First Lieutenant Regular Army about to make captain, they would uh, send me to Fort, uh, Fort Knox, Kentucky to the Armored Advance Course. After graduating from uh, Fort Knox, then was sent uh, to Fort Polk, Louisiana, where I got a reconnaissance troop and was assigned to ground duty to command the reconnaissance troop. I had a Troop, the 1st, the 82nd, 1st uh, Armored Division. That was a very interesting one. Uh, I was able to borrow a helicopter and command my troop from a helicopter. Found out I could, uh, 
wasn't limited by a road net, and consequently I could uh, do three, and we were under the Atomic Field Army concept, which simply means I had uh, tanks, armored personnel carriers, armored personnel carriers with 4.2 mortars on them, so I could round up uh, three combined arms team, one infantry, and two tank heavy. So that was a, a great deal of fun and got my flying time in that way. After finishing that, uh, I got a call from Washington and uh, they wanted to know if I wanted to finish out my aeronautical engineering degree because they needed those. So I volunteered to do that and uh, got sent to Auburn, Alabama where I could yell War Eagle and uh, got my aeronautical engineering degree. At that time, uh, they also were looking for a class, a new class of test pilots at Edwards Air Force Base, and I got selected to do that. Seven of us went there, and I was awarded the Hans Trophy for Overall Excellence, class of 60B. I was a captain at the time and flew UH-1s, T-28s, T-33s, T-37, F-102 and B-57s. In 1960, uh, I was assigned to the Army test activity at Edwards Air Force Base, and we were out looking for different jobs at that time because the Air Force had been doing all our flight tests and we were now taking over. We were able to uh, service our U.S. Forest Service, because they were looking to test the B-25 of why they were losing wings on, on using borate bombs. So we took it up and found out there wasn't a uh, drop envelope available that would not pop the wings off, and so B-25 was only a 1.6G airplane to begin with, and after many years of corrosion and such, uh, they just didn't measure up to what the Forest Service wanted. During that time, I concentrated on V2L stability and control evaluations, uh, flying the XV3 tilt rotor, the XV14 uh, jet-powered vertical takeoff and landing, and an XROE, which was a, a single one-man helicopter which was to be dropped for safety to pick up uh, down pilots, but found out it was uh, not successful and the program was dropped. By that time, I had an opportunity to support uh, the 20th anniversary of Army Aviation in St. Louis. We were able to uh, get an exact replica of the Spirit of St. Louis from uh, Paul Frank Tallman and Paul Mance, who had one out in Orange County, so I had the pleasure of going to Orange County and flying the Spirit of St. Louis out to uh, Edwards Air Force Base where it was flown back to uh, St. Louis and was used to support the Army Aviation 20th anniversary. We supported NASA's uh, request to provide the H-37 support using a thousand foot cable to pick up the Gemini plus the Regala wing in order to uh, bring the Gemini home with a guided parachute. Uh, this program did not prove out and was, was then canceled and the four parachute emergency system became the standard and worked very well. In 1964, I was uh, transferred back to Edwards, but this time to the NASA High Speed Flight Research Center to participate in the Lunar Lander Research Vehicle Program.